object relates to another. So uh, the shadows in this case were part of one of the pieces of that I used in building my reconstruction. Is that something new for you to do in a case? No, every single case that I've worked on deals with lighting and shadows. Otherwise, you'd have a blank canvas up there for the jury to look at. You have to have light and uh, it'll cast shadows. So you, I deal with it in every single case that I work on. Okay. Is that something that's found in textbooks? Yes, textbooks, uh, specifically about that, but also in the software that I use, every single 3D animation software, 3D program, they all deal with lighting. So in every book that you get and every course that you take, it has a chapter or a section in the course on lighting and uh, shadows. Would you say the use of light is synonymous with the use of shadows in crime scene reconstruction? Yes. Uh, it would be pretty odd if it didn't have shadows. And is that a g generally accepted in your field? Yes. And, and what you're discussing, is that something that's been um, the subject matter of peer review articles and publications? Yes. Now, regarding the known potential rate of error, how could you explain what that would be to the court, regarding, specifically regarding the use of shadows? Um, the known rate is, varies. It just depends on the quality of the video, um, the amount of lighting that you have, how dark it is. Um, and the location of the shadow, is it uh, interrupted by another object? So a lot of that is dependent on each individual case that you look at. In the prior cases that you've testified in court, how many would you say involved in one degree or the other the use of shadows? I've used shadows in every single case because I've had to light scenes in every single case. Has your, has your use of use or analysis of shadows ever been challenged by anybody in any prior prior court? No. Um, to your knowledge, has the use of shadows ever been used um, against a defendant to convict a defendant? Yes. In what case would that be? There was one in Pennsylvania, um, Kevin Dowling. Uh, he was the defendant. And in that case, um, they were using a video um, in the analysis of the, of the video in that case they were able to show that the shadows that were used in that video were manipulated and so they were able to show from the shadows that the video had been altered One moment. And so I'm going to ask you, the existence and maintenance of standards controlling the technique's operation. Could you speak about that? Um, what was it again? Re regarding the, the, the techniques, the existence and maintenance of standards controlling the technique's operation. Is that something that would be more generally um, controlled by by the use or, or what you what you use as um, computer generated imagery yes there's a lot of things that you can do to uh, vary the lighting that's one of the things that we do when um, you're trying to reproduce lighting in the computer from the real world is look at all the different variables <clears throat> look at all the different variables and there's an awful lot of tools that are in the computer that can mimic those and be adjusted. Um, Did you use Moto, the program Moto? In this yes. Case? Could you explain to the court what exactly that program is? Moto is an animation 3D uh, modeling program. Uh, it's being used more and more in video animation that you see on TV. They were bought by another company in England, and so they've got a lot more features and. Uh, 
a lot more resources for doing your reconstructions. And could you, could you explain to the court exactly what facts um, you have relied on to, to give the testimony that you're giving today? Uh, facts um, in my reconstruction or? Yes. Um, the videos that were uh, supplied to me uh, by your office, um, videos from the surveillance cameras. I looked at those. I looked at um, crime scene photos, uh, all of the crime scene photos. I looked at, uh, went through some police reports, uh, viewed those. Um, I was supplied some uh, interviews, but I didn't rely on the interviews for my reconstruction. Did you work with Dr. Bodden? Yes, Dr. Bodden was the one that I relied on for the pathology in my reconstruction of the gunshot wounds and the placement of those. particular textbooks or publications that you rely on to provide the court with the testimony that, you, that you've provided today? Um, textbooks for my reconstruction? Just the, no, regarding, regarding your, your testimony today regarding the use of light and shadows, is, is there, could you point the court to a textbook that you use or a publication that you, that you would refer to regarding what you've testified today? Um, I've got multiple ones on lighting uh, techniques and uh, reconstruction on uh, the lighting. Um, that's, that's, it's not something rare? It's no. Not something rare. No, it's not rare at all. Every single software manual for... Uh, could, you re could you recall a specific textbook? Um, I don't recall the name right now. It's uh, lighting techniques. Uh, that's in the title. I can't remember the entire title. Have you reviewed the complete crime scene investigation handbook by Mr. Baxter? Is that something that you're familiar with? Um, what was the name of that? Complete crime scene investigation handbook by Mr. Baxter Jr. Everett Baxter Jr. I'm familiar with it. And would that be a textbook that, that, that takes into consideration shadows? Yes, deals with shadows and it deals with uh, things like photogrammetry and other techniques. I'm sorry, what did you say deals with? Photogrammetry. Could you explain to the court what type of um, work you did directly with Bodden to, to assist you in your, in your, in your reconstruction? Um, I went through and looked at his report, and then I, uh, what I did was I created a figure that was um, similar to the female of five foot six, as accurate as I could with the, from the autopsy reports, and from that, um, place dowels uh, where the bullet entry and exit wounds were. And from there, then I uh, had an on-screen conference with Dr. Baden where he could see my computer. And we went over and discussed the placement of the entry and the exit uh, dowels in the um, figure that I had. And then from that, uh, we progressed more to positioning of the figure at the time when they were when uh, the shooting occurred how long have people been using lighting and specifically shadows in crime scene reconstruction uh, 
as long as there's been crime scene reconstruction. And your testimony regarding lighting and shadows in this particular case, is it, is it under a reasonable degree of scientific certainty? Yes. No further questions. Okay. Mr. Schumacher, it's, um, it's your position that the study of shadows and the testimony regarding shadows is a precise science. Isn't that correct? Well, it varies according to what um, material you're using, but um, when you're uh, when you're reviewing shadows, uh, you rely on multiple things to back up your findings. So, right. but it's your position that it's a precise science, isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. So. In those 23 cases that you testified about in court, um, yesterday in your deposition you indicated that 12 of them you actually testified as to the identification of someone based on where somebody was based on the study of shadows. Is that correct? What was my exact wording? I'm sorry? What was the exact wording on it? Okay. Well, let me ask you again. In how many of the 23 cases where you testified about lighting did you make an identification of where somebody was based on the study of the shadow? I used shadows and lighting in all of those cases. So when I get up and testify, it deals with uh, visibility and whether you can see something or whether you can not see something. So. Every case that I've testified to deals with that. Well, in fact, yesterday you said that there were 12 cases that you specifically said that you were able to identify overruled where somebody was based on the study of the shadows. Is that correct? Well, my exact you? words. Why don't I let you read your deposition? Sure. Have you not had a chance to do that yet, Mr. Schumacher? No. May I yes, you may. Yes, 12. I would say 12, and maybe more, but it's at least 12. Do you have the names of those cases? Uh, not all of them with me. One of them is uh, People versus Ramirez in San Francisco. That was a shooting from vehicle to vehicle, and it had to do with one vehicle passing the other vehicle, and whether you were able to see uh, a person from that one vehicle into the other one. So in my reconstruction, that's what I did. Are you finished? Sure. Your answer? Okay. Um, you just testified on direct that um, the lighting in these situations is very important. Isn't that correct? In what situations? In determining recreating shadows or determining the position of things, that lighting is important. Isn't that right? It's involved in every single one of them. Would you not say it's important? In determining Some cases the are more important than others. Would you say it's important in this case to determine the placement of the shadows? Yes, it's important according to when you're analyzing the video, it is. But in fact, you didn't recreate the exact lighting in this case when you went back to the house. Isn't that right? When I went back to the house, um, I reconstructed the, the lighting and I went through and I determined which lights cast the shadows in what areas. But when you recreated this scene, you did not recreate the exact lighting conditions. Isn't that correct? That was not my scope of work. So you were not asked to recreate them. Is that correct? I was not asked to recreate the exact lighting in the kitchen for my reconstruction of the positioning of um, Ms. Alfonso when she was shot because you were not trying to reproduce the shadows exactly the way they were in the video. Isn't that correct? Correct. It was not necessary. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that it wasn't necessary to analyze the shadows to determine the position of the individuals in the kitchen. 
and your verification of this consisted of you walking around the house. Isn't that correct, in the kitchen? Walking into the kitchen and observing where the lights cast the shadows. You didn't document yourself doing that, correct? Uh, just visually verified where the shadows were. You didn't have somebody else with you, though. That was you that just visualized that. Is that right? That's because it's me doing the work, so. Okay. Deborah? And um, before you talked about um, when uh, Mr. Padilla asked you about um, the complete crime scene investigative handbook, you recall being asked that question just now? Yes. Right. And you said that there was a whole chapter on the study of lighting and photogrammetry. Isn't that correct? That was your word that you just used? I don't know whether I said chapter. There's sections on uh, photogrammetry and how to analyze uh, photographs and measure objects. That's what photogrammetry is, isn't it? It's surveying and mapping to measure the distances between objects, correct? Okay. And I believe you just said it, but just to be clear, you didn't use any other additional equipment other than just your eyes to visually determine the shadows and their placement when you reconstructed the scene. Isn't that correct? Um, I took photographs and I got scans of the kitchen. Did you turn those photographs over to the defense? Uh, they were just used as a work product in my reconstruction. So they've never seen them? No. You've never been published in the area of um, the use of shadows in the identification or placement of items, have you? No. George, can I have a minute? Yes, you may. And the courses that you were discussing on direct examination, um, what courses have you taken specifically as it relates to the identification of or placement of items um, based on shadows? Uh, it was a course I took in 3D, uh, 3D Studio about five years ago. Um, a whole, whole uh, section in the course that I took dealt with shadows and reconstruction of the shadows. Um, every software program that I've used, Maya, uh, Modo, um, uh, Ares 360, um, every software program that I've worked with, uh, I've had to understand and deal with shadows in every course that's involved in learning those pieces of software deal with lighting and shadows. But my question was, what courses have you taken in, for the purpose of using shadows to actually make an identification of where an object is located as opposed to creating or recreating a scene that's accurate? That's part of what you do when you're, recon when you're creating a shadow, is you understand where that shadow is being, um, is coming from where your light source is, where the shadow is. But fair to say that there, you haven't had a single one specific class just on the identification of shadows and how you can identify a source or uh, an object from where they are. Is that correct? Correct. I've had years of uh, courses that I've taken dealing with volume and um, shadows and light and ambient light and everything that's needed for reproducing and creating 3D reconstructions. Redirect. Sir, uh, shadow, as you, as you testified, shadow is just one portion of, of what you use as a, as a, as a crime scene reconstructions, correct? 
Yes. So it would be silly to envision a course just dedicated to that particular sliver of, of what you do, correct? Sustained open-ended question, please. The, you were asked regarding, regarding if you had um, recreated the exact lighting. Is that is recreating the exact lighting in this case something that would that you would need in order for you to be able to give your opinion in this case regarding what occurred to a reasonable degree of scientific cal uh, calculation? No, it's not. It wasn't needed for doing my final uh, um, final rendering final product. Okay. You, you were asked about courses just specifically re relating shadowing. Do you, do you know, to, to, to the best of your, your knowledge, if a course just specifically re related to shadows exists? Not specifically shadows itself. If you have a course that deals with shadows, then it has to deal with lighting and um, volume and uh, ambient light and all the things that make up shadow. Mr. Schumacher, if you would kindly take a step outside. Okay. Thanks.